Today, I'm going to teach you how to use voice control to verbally control any Mac running macOS Catalina or later. If you or someone you know is living with paralysis, this feature is potentially life-changing. How to use voice control on your Mac. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hi folks, a few quick things before we begin. The first is I have created a free PDF guide that goes hand in hand with today's class. You can find a link to that down below in the video description. That guide gives you a list of all of the available verbal commands, as well as a few custom ones that I'm gonna teach you how to create later on in this video. Part of the reason why I decided to do this is because if you are paralyzed, that way you or someone else can print that document and potentially prop it up in front of you. I have a quick story that I wanted to share with all of you before we begin this class, just to kind of put things into perspective. Several years ago, and well before I had a YouTube channel, I had a client of mine who was diagnosed with ALS. I worked together with this gentleman over several sessions, and while it was very new territory for me at the time, I was able to teach him how to control his Mac using only his voice, back then using Dragon Dictation. Today, a more advanced version of that technology now comes built into every Mac running Mac OS Catalina or later. For me as a teacher, creating this class has been a very full circle moment. And I just wanted to say that I really hope that this video finds its way to the people who truly need it. Because despite a couple of bugs here and there, this technology is potentially life-changing to anyone dealing with paralysis. I also wanted to take a brief moment to recognize the hard work and dedication of Sarah Herlinger, as well as her team. Sarah is the Global Accessibility Chief at Apple, who is responsible for making voice control possible. Good work, Sarah and team. Last thing before we begin, a couple of weeks ago, I announced in one of my videos that while I love making all of these videos for all of you, the reality of my situation is that my current production space where I make all of this content has become increasingly challenging to work in over the years. There are a lot of interruptions, I'm completely out of space, and because of that, I have decided to try to make one of my childhood dreams come true. I've decided to build a small production studio where I hope to be able to create video content like this for years to come. So I'm asking today, if my videos have helped you over the years, I could really use your support and I welcome you to contribute whatever amount you feel comfortable giving. You can help support me through Venmo at Tech Talk America. If you prefer PayPal, there is a link down below in the video description. Or if your thing is a good old fashioned check in the mail, the PO Box address is PO Box 1566, Provincetown, Massachusetts, 02657. I love my job and I thank all of you for your support. And without any further ado, let's begin the class and switch to my Mac. Let's start by talking about how to enable voice control. As long as your Mac is running Mac OS Catalina or later, just go to the Apple icon at the top left. From there, navigate to System Preferences. Next, let's click on Accessibility, and when we scroll down on this list here on the left, just click on Voice Control. And finally, click Enable. If it's the first time you've ever done this on your Mac, your Mac will need to download a few files from the internet, which can take a couple of minutes. At this point, you should see a microphone icon appear at the bottom right corner of your Mac, and the first commands that we're going to go over today are how to make your Mac start and stop listening for commands. Those two phrases are wake up and go to sleep. The next few commands all have to do with basic navigation. So let's learn two more, which are show grid and show numbers. If you decide to use the grid option, you'll see a numeric grid appear over your screen. At this point, you would then say the number of the approximate area where you want to click. Then you'll see another grid appear. And from there, you can either say yet another number, which will make it zoom in even further, or you can say the word click followed by the corresponding number. So let's say I want to open up this photo of me. I could just say double click 13. Now, the other option for basic navigation is you can say show numbers, which will then place numbers on every clickable button on the screen. From there, you just say the corresponding number in order to initiate a click. 14. One thing that I wanted to note is that when using this option, you do not actually need to say the word click. You can just simply say the number and that will do. 
One really helpful resource that will definitely come in handy is if you ever forget how to phrase a command, you can just say, show commands, and you'll see a pop-up screen appear at the top right corner of your Mac with a list of suggested commands. Another trick that I wanted to mention at the beginning of this class is that I believe that Siri can play a major role in helping you get things done. I mean, just to give you a short list of some of the things that you can now do with Siri includes everything from composing emails, sending and receiving text messages, creating appointments, setting reminders, playing music, launching applications, the list goes on and on. There is one specific detail that I'd like to mention about Siri when using it with voice control. So normally, if you wanted to summon Siri on something like your iPhone or your iPad, the verbal command that you would normally use is but if you wanted to summon Siri on your Mac while using voice control, the correct way to phrase it is to say, open Siri. I thought this would be a good thing to mention. That way, if you have other iOS devices within shouting distance, they don't suddenly all go off at the same time and start yelling at each other. And before you know it, it feels a little bit like a Siri family reunion. One of the things that I discovered when I was learning how to use voice control was that I found it to be very difficult to be able to visually organize my windows so that I could cleanly switch back and forth between apps. That was when I got an idea. I think one of the most potentially useful features to accessibility users is the ability to run apps in full screen mode. But the problem is that the number of commands that you actually have to give to set that up takes a painfully long time. And that is the reason why right now, I would like to teach you how to create a few custom commands that will simplify this process. To create a custom command, let's go back into Voice Control's preferences and let's click here where it says commands. I'm going to click the little plus button here at the bottom left to create a new command. And the first one that I want to teach you is screen right. And when we're done, we're going to create a second called screen left. You'll see how this comes into play in a moment. As you can see here in the first field, it's asking me to write my verbal command, which is of course going to be screen right. The next field, we are going to keep where it says any application. And where it says perform, we are going to click into that field and choose press keyboard shortcut. At this point, I'm going to press the control key and my right arrow key. I'll now click the plus symbol and add a second command so that when I say screen left, it reverses the action. Finally, we're going to create one more command, which I'm going to call full screen mode. And the key command for this particular one is control, command, and the letter F as in Frank. Here is where this is all going. I think a lot of you will find that voice control is a lot easier to use when you only have one app on the screen at a time. So my recommendation is that when you first start your computer, you can begin by opening each of the apps that you plan to use and then immediately follow that by saying full screen mode. And anytime you need to switch back and forth between those apps, you can just simply say screen right or screen left. By the way, you should also know that if you ever need to get apps out of full screen mode, you can simply just say full screen mode again. Folks, we are going to take a very brief commercial break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. At this point, I want to demonstrate a few different types of common operations using voice control. In the process of recording this next segment, I'm going to go back and forth between giving verbal commands and then explaining the purpose of them to all of you. So let's say I want to check my email. I'll start by waking up voice control. Wake up it gives a little tone when it recognizes a command. So if you don't hear that tone, it either means that you phrase something incorrectly or it just didn't understand you. Let's now launch the mail program. Open mail. Now at this point, you'll see that I have multiple columns where I could potentially scroll. For example, I could scroll down on my list of emails here on the left, or I could scroll down on this message that is currently open on the right hand side. To tell the computer that I want to scroll down on this open email, I'm going to use the grid command to initiate a click, and then you'll note that when I do that, I'm specifically choosing an area where there isn't one of those images, just because that may open up a hyperlink. So I'm just going to tell it to click somewhere off to the side, but inside that column. Show grid. Click 41. 
Scroll down. Scroll up. Scroll to top. Scroll to bottom. Get the idea? Now, let's say I want to create a new email. The way to phrase this is to say new item. New item. If the person that you're sending a message to is already in your contacts or previous recipients, you can simply say their name. However, if you need to spell out an email address, that's a little bit different and admittedly a bit more difficult. Actually, one of the things that I found to be the most difficult was when it came to spelling an email address. Here's the reason why. To spell a word, you have to say the word letter followed by the letter that you want to input. If you want to trigger the at symbol, the way to phrase it is to say at sign. So, for example, let's pretend that this is the email address that I'm trying to input. And by the way, that is not my real email address. To spell this out, I would need to say letter D, letter A, letter V, letter I, letter D, at sign, letter A, letter P, letter P, letter L, letter E, dot com. There are a few reasons why spelling an email address can actually be a very frustrating operation. The first is that if you don't spell quickly, or even pause just for a moment in between letters, the Max Auto Suggest feature tends to kick in, which can add additional spaces in between letters in the final address. I do have an idea for a relatively simple fix for this type of situation, and just in case anyone at Apple is actually watching this video, I feel like this issue could be easily remedied just by adding number support to the virtual keyboard. Let me show you what I mean. If you say the words, show keyboard, you'll see a virtual keyboard appear on the screen. But there's one little problem. Show numbers. As you can see here, there is no number support for the virtual keyboard. It just applies the numbers feature to whatever app is running in the background. So, Apple, if you happen to see this video, my request is to not only add number support to the virtual keyboard so that a user could effectively spell numerically, but I would also like to request that that virtual keyboard be made a little bit larger. And just in case Apple actually grants that request, I also wanted to say that the virtual keyboard is potentially a perfect app to use with the brand new sidecar feature in Mac OS Catalina. That way, if you have an iPad next to your computer, you can basically move the virtual keyboard to that screen. Sorry to get sidetracked there, but I felt it was important to mention that. Now, getting back to our topic, anytime you need to jump to the next field, for example, when writing an email, you can use the phrase next field. This is also an important command to remember whenever you're on the web and filling out something like an online form. Another useful command that I wanted to teach you is how to correct a word or phrase when dictation gets it wrong. All you need to do is say the word correct, followed by the incorrect word or phrase that needs editing. You'll then see a list of options that you can choose from just by saying the corresponding number. And finally, I couldn't end this lesson without mentioning that if you ever need to undo something, you can either say undo that or scratch that to go back a step. Keep in mind any of the other commands that we didn't cover in this class, you will find a list of all of them in my free PDF guide and the link to that is down below in the video description. If this video helped you, you can show your support by making a financial contribution of whatever amount you want, which will go towards the construction of my one day new production studio. You can contribute through Venmo at Tech Talk America by PayPal through the link down below in the video description. Or if you prefer to send a check in the mail, the address is P.O. Box 1566, Provincetown, Massachusetts, 02657. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.